Hello and welcome to another episode of Black Girl Bible. I'm your host, Janae Imani, and today is Season 2, Episode 14, Be Faithful in Your Wilderness. Let's start off with a brief word of prayer. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for waking us up this morning. I thank you for giving me the courage and the strength to continue to pour out your word and to speak to your people. God, I pray that today ignites a new fire in someone's heart. I pray that they are on fire for you, God. I pray that they chase after everything that you have for them, everything that you've called them to be with zeal, Father. I pray that they will not be weary. I pray that they will be strong. They will be courageous. They will be faithful and they will go out into this world with a boldness that can only come from you, Father. I pray for your total shalom peace over their life. I pray for a joy that the world cannot take from them, Father. I pray that you place that in their hearts today. I pray, God, that they will put you before anything else in this world. I pray that they will hold you high, Father, that they will look to you for their guidance, their direction, and the way that they should go in this world. I pray that this week you give them clarity, you give them guidance, you give them that comfort that you are right there with them and that they are going the right direction father if they're not if they are wayward father i pray that you bring them in close that you set their path straight father for you have ordered our steps and we thank you that you are so intentional that you love us so much that you are there with us every step of the way father that you want us to invite you into all aspects of our life and i pray that we do that today i pray that we get closer to you today i pray that We are clearer on who you have called us to be today, Father. And I pray that we have an amazing, blessed week filled with purpose, filled with chasing after you. In Jesus' name, amen. So before we get into today's episode, I just want to thank all of you, honestly, so much from the bottom of my heart. I stumbled on some comments just over the past week or so, you know, that we haven't had new podcast episodes and they're just so encouraging. And I pray that No matter who hears this podcast, no matter who tunes in week to week, if I can help one person, I am grateful. I'm grateful that God has given me this platform. I'm grateful that it is growing. I'm grateful that you all are growing in your faith and that this has become a space where you feel safe, where you feel that you can connect with God, hear his voice, take what I'm saying and study it in your own time with him and hear from him directly. I'm thankful that some of you are getting confirmation in things that I'm saying. I'm thankful that not only am I helping all of you, but God is speaking to me and he's helping me and I'm growing in my faith. And I'm just really, really grateful. I think when I think back to how all of this started a few years ago, like I think I had this idea in 2020 that God gave this to me and said, this is what I want you to do. And it's definitely been a journey for me, but I definitely feel as though I am finding my place (laughs) in all of this and I'm getting a clearer picture of what God wants this to be. I think that there's still a whole bunch more that he hasn't shared with me yet, which makes me just excited to see what will come. But I definitely know that some great, great things are happening. I am working on some other things for you all to be able to provide a little bit more than just these podcast episodes. So I do look forward to that. Definitely stay up to date on my Instagram. If you haven't already, it's blackgirlbible underscore. Just keeping you guys, you know, updated a little bit more content than just one episode a week here with the podcast. Um, And for those of you that listen, if you've never watched, I encourage you to go ahead and watch on YouTube. YouTube. Um, It's the same episode, but you get to see me as I speak. So I don't know if that's something that you all look forward to, but we're definitely growing over there and definitely building a really nice community. And I love to interact with you all. So just however you connect, I'm grateful that you're here and whatever works for you, whether it's watching, whether it's listening, get the word how you need to get it. (laughs) So let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. But we are going to start off in Deuteronomy chapter 1, and I'm going to be reading from the NLT or the New Living Translation. In Deuteronomy 1, this is an address that Moses is giving to the people of Israel while they're in the wilderness. Verse 2 starts off with, Normally it takes only 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea, going by way of Mount Seir. But 40 years after the Israelites left Egypt, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses addressed the people of Israel, telling them everything the Lord had commanded him to say. We're going to end up going into everything that, you know, Moses is telling the people. But I just think that this part kind of jumped out to me a little bit because it says normally it only takes 11 days to travel. But the Israelites have been there for 40 years. 
that's a huge difference. And I think, well, why would God say that it only takes 11 days? And so I think as we kind of go throughout this scripture and kind of see what was happening during that time frame, it'll make a little bit, it'll become a little clearer, but immediately just reading that, I thought sometimes when God brings you out of a situation and he's bringing you into your next, there's that transition period. And I know for a good amount of time, <laughs> I felt like I've been in this transition period, but something that stuck out to me was I've always kind of felt like, okay, God, I'm in this transition period, but what's next? I'm just waiting on my next. I'm waiting for God to pull me into my next, which I do believe he has started pulling me into my next. So we're thankful for that. But this stuck out to me because if the time should only take 11 days, but they've been there 40 years, what was the reason? I think sometimes we get stuck in a wilderness season or in a transition season because we're not ready. Because God is doing some things in us before we can go into that next season. And sometimes that's on us. So whether it takes you a year or it takes you five can be on you. I think that sometimes as Christians, maybe we get caught up in oh, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting on God. But sometimes God is waiting on us. He's waiting on us to mature, to deepen our relationship with him, to get to the level we need to be at so we can accept all of the wonderful things that he has for us. That just kind of stuck out to me like, hmm, okay, sometimes your wilderness season can be extended based on how you handle it, which I think definitely mine probably was extended a little bit, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful. <laughs> I think I got to where I need to be and I'm still excited for where I'm going. So if that's you, it's okay. Let's skip down to verse six, where it's the command to leave Sinai. When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord, our God said to us, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, and the coastal plain. Go to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon and all the way to the great Euphrates River. Look, I am giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it, for it is the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to all their descendants. So this stuck out to me here because... This is letting me know what's ahead of you is already yours. God has already given it to you. He's already laid it out. It is up to you to follow his commands, to be obedient, to be faithful and go after it. It's not just for you and it's not just about you either. So the things that he's given to you, the things that he has waiting for you, some of these things are things that you've been praying for and some of these things are things that your ancestors have been praying for. And maybe they didn't see it in their generation, but it's going to come out through you. And you are going to be what your bloodline has been waiting for. And I love that. So if we skip down a little bit to verse 10, it says, The Lord your God has increased your population, making you as numerous as the stars. And verse 11, And may the Lord, the God of your ancestors, multiply you a thousand times more and bless you as he promised. So while the Israelites have been in their wilderness season for 40 years, and maybe that's not the initial time that God had planned for them to be in their wilderness, he was with them through that whole time. He was growing them. He was blessing them. He was multiplying them. So while you may be waiting for your big promise that God is giving to you or to walk in your purpose, to walk in the destiny of, of the person that God has called you to be, you may not be there yet, but it doesn't mean you're destitute. <laughs> like God still is with you. God still is loving you, favoring you, blessing you molding you and shaping you into that person you need to be. So be grateful for the journey, the process that it takes. It's a pruning, it's a refining. And when I think about my journey, I think about, well, hmm, was I in my wilderness longer than I was supposed to be? Part of me thinks yes, but I also can recognize all that God has done for me during this time. It wasn't there was purpose to it. There was good that came out of that. And you can be grateful for that. You can recognize that. And so two can exist at once where you can be grateful for what you've gone through and realize I needed that. I needed to see this. I needed to learn this. I needed to grow in this area to get to where I'm going. But I think recognizing too, okay, did it take me a little too long to do this? What was I not doing? Was I not disciplined? Was I not obedient? Was I not clear? Was I not focused? What maybe extended this time frame that when another transition season comes again, because they happen, how can I go about that differently? What will show in that season 
that I matured from this last transition season to then. And I think that's where you can pay attention to like that time frame of how long maybe you're in a transition season. Verse 12 says, but you are such a heavy load to carry. How can I deal with all your problems and bickering? Choose some well-respected men from each tribe who are known for their wisdom and understanding and I will appoint them as your leaders. So again, when we're talking about that pruning, that refining, before you can get to where you need to go, You've got to shed some things. You've got to shed some old bad habits. You've got to shed some old mindsets. There's just some things that you've got to sort out. You've got to figure out before you can go forward. You need wisdom. You need clarity. You need unity before you can go forward. If we skip down to verse 21, it says, look, he has placed the land in front of you. Go and occupy it as the Lord, the God of your ancestors has promised you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. But you all came to me and said, first, let's send out scouts to explore the land for us. They will advise us on the best route to take and which towns we should enter. This part I definitely think is interesting. It's clear the direction that God is giving to Moses and to the people. He's saying, I've already promised this to you. Go and take it. God is aware of what's currently in that space. God is aware of what his people will encounter when they get there. He didn't tell them that. But he knew. And so sometimes God doesn't give you the full picture because he knows, and I'm skipping ahead a little bit here, but he knows that if he gives you the full picture, you won't go for it. Or you might shrink yourself or you might doubt yourself. You might doubt him. You won't go forward with the boldness that he has assured you this is yours. Do you believe it? That's what I'm hearing. God has given you something. God has told you something. But do you believe it? You can't go after it unless you believe what God has given you. You believe it to be true. You've been waiting for so long that you've lost hope. You've lost faith. You want to have faith in God, but you're still a little unsure. You're still a little hesitant. You're not walking in it as if you already have it. Hold your chin up. Be bold. God has promised it to you. God has given it to you. You heard him. You heard him clearly. You heard him right. He gave that to you. Don't allow what you've seen in the past or how things have gone before to affect the faith that you have in what God has given you to go forward. You need to be walking in it, holding your chin up high, standing strong and firm in the word that God has given you. Walk in it now. Although you may not be there, walk as if you are already there. When you're doing what God has given you, whether you're going to do it for 10,000 people or today you're doing it for one, do it the same. Do it the same. Walk as if you are already there. God is going to give you so much more than what he has shown you, but you need to walk in what he has already shown you. That was definitely for me. So (laughs) that was definitely, definitely for me. And I'm getting there. Here we see God is already telling them, don't be afraid and don't be discouraged, which lets me know he knows that at some point there's going to be something that might make them afraid and might make them discouraged. So he's already giving them that confidence that assurance that they need before that's happened and then right after they're saying oh well let's go and scout first let's just dip our toe in the water before we get there so that we can know sometimes it's like okay is that logical is it smart sure but sometimes when god has given you something i think the logical piece kind of gets removed It's like, you know what? I need crazy faith right now. I know what I heard from God. I'm going to listen and I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to put all my trust in him. I know that God will not leave me hanging, especially when it's something that he has given you. He's not going to leave you out there by yourself. He's not going to leave you there alone. While he's telling the Israelites to go and take the land, it's promised to them. It's theirs. He is going to go with them. He plans to go with them. He's telling them, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. He is with them. But they still feel feel like, oh, well, I just, I just need to be sure. I just need to check this. I just need to see. That's not what God told them to do. So being clear, being obedient and being expedient when God tells you to do something is very important. If we look at verse 26, it says, but you rebelled against the command of the Lord, your God and refused to go in. You complained in your tents and said, the Lord must hate us. That's why he has brought us here from Egypt to hand us over to the Amorites to be slaughtered. Where can we go? Our brothers have demoralized us with their report. They tell us the people of the land are taller and more powerful than we are, and their towns are large, with walls rising high into the sky. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. So here, we're going to pause. We're going to keep going in a little bit, but we'll take a pause. God knew all of this. He knew all of that was there. He knew that his people were in a mind state 
where if they did not act, if they did not go, if they did not keep their eyes on him, they would get distracted, they would get discouraged, they would be afraid, they would become complacent and stuck where he had no intention for them to be stuck. He wanted them to transition. He wanted them to move through. And sometimes you get stuck in your transition season because of fear. Fear can hold you back from what God has for you. Not because God doesn't have it for you, but because you're afraid that he's not going to walk with you. He's not going to be there with you. God will never give you something without giving you the means to get there, giving you the direction, the guidance, the encouragement, walking with you to get there. He doesn't expect you to do it by yourself. He doesn't expect you to do it alone. He is going to be with you. So if he's given you something, trust that he will make a way. He is so intentional. He will get you there. Just trust him, follow him, and be obedient. The Israelites got caught up in what they saw with their natural eyes, that they will be slaughtered. They started to believe that God brought them out of a dark time just to have them slaughtered. What was promised to them? Was it a lie? Did they stop believing? Did they lose hope? God is not a man that he should lie. Believe in what he has told you. Believe in what he has given you, what he has placed in your heart. Don't lose hope for the promise. No matter what it looks like, you have to keep going. A lot of the times, that's why God will shield us. He'll cover our eyes from things. He won't allow you to know certain things before you get there because if he gave you everything, you might run. And it's not that you're weak or that you're not cut out for what he has given you, but you're human and he knows that and he understands that. And so he guides you and carries you a certain way, the same a parent would with a child. And as they get older, you can give them more, you can show them more as they mature. But what you tell to a two-year-old may not be what you tell to your 13-year-old. But it's always done in love. It's always done with your best interest in mind. And that's exactly what God has for you. He knows that Based on the season that you're in and the space that you're in, the maturity that you have, he can only tell you so much. He still wants you to get there. He's going to bring you there. But he knows that, okay, right now we've got to do it this way. And as she matures and as she grows, we can do it this way. Verse 29 says, but I said to you, don't be shocked or afraid of them. The Lord your God is going ahead of you. He will fight for you just as you saw him do in Egypt. And you saw how the Lord your God cared for you all along the way as you traveled through the wilderness, just as a father cares for his child. Now he has brought you to this place. So just as I was saying, I guess I just got a little bit ahead of myself, but God is with you all along the way. Not only is he with you, but he's already gone ahead of you. He already knows what's coming. He knows how to get you to where he needs you to be. Verse 32 says, but even after all he did, you refused to trust the Lord your God who goes before you looking for the best places to camp, guiding you with a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. Don't lose faith in God. Don't lose your trust in God and his word. God keeps his word. He keeps his promises. Are we going to keep our faith? Are we going to hold steadfast no matter how long it might take? No matter how long it might take. I think a lot of times when time goes on and something doesn't happen with the quickness that we thought it should or that we felt like you know it might happen we lose hope we lose faith we start to doubt is this even what god said don't allow time to hinder you in that way to allow fear and doubt to creep in god doesn't view time the same way that we do i've, I've talked about this a little bit before in a previous episode and sometimes it's a little hard for me to kind of explain like i i have it in my head and getting it out can be so difficult but the way that god sees time he knows the past he knows the end he knows the beginning he knows where you are he knows the different paths that you can take to get there based on how obedient you're going to be he knows all of that. And so his concept of time is, is different than the way where we see time as so linear and two dimensional. So where you might think, oh, this is taking so long. God doesn't see it that way. And so he needs you to just be patient because he sees and knows all things. And he knows when the timing is right. Verse 35 says, not one of you from this wicked generation will live to see the good land I swore to give your ancestors, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, he will see this land because he has followed the Lord completely. I will give to him and his descendants some of the very land he explored during his scouting mission. What really sticks out to me here is just as I said before, how some things that you are going to receive are things that your ancestors prayed for, things that your ancestors were hoping for, and they didn't get the chance to see it. I think a key part of that of why they may not have seen 
all those things that God promised to them is because they lost trust. They lost faith in God. And so just know that the things that God has given you, he wants to give it to you in your lifetime, in your season, and that it will bless your generations to come. But he wants you to see it. He wants you to enjoy that promise. But you have to get there. It's like that saying, if you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You have to make those choices, those decisions, those steps. God can order your steps, but you have to walk them. And he wants you to enjoy the fruits of your labor, the promises that he's given you to achieve the full destiny that he has for you. And many times people in this life will not achieve their full destiny. They might be blessed. They might have a great relationship with God. They might achieve amazing things, but did they achieve their full potential, their full destiny that God had for them? I think sometimes people don't. And it's because of our human nature where we get ourselves stuck. And so it's important to just always look to God. It's not that the promise doesn't come true because God always keeps his promises, but that may be for the next generation. I encourage you to stay steadfast today, to hold tight on the word that God has given you, to keep your faith, keep your hope, keep your trust in God so you can see the promise in your lifetime. Verse 41 says, Then you confessed, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go into the land and fight for it, as the Lord our God has commanded us. So your men strapped on their weapons, thinking it would be easy to attack the hill country. But the Lord told me to tell you, do not attack, for I am not with you. If you go ahead on your own, you will be crushed by your enemies. You have to listen to God. You have to be obedient to God when he calls you, when he tells you to do something. And it's important to know when God is with you and when he's taking his hand off of a situation that you are in. You always want to be in God's presence, in God's will, and following his instruction. Because the Israelites, they were scared. They didn't follow his instruction when he told them. God removed his hand from that blessing. The Israelites were no longer going to receive that in their lifetime. He was like, okay, I cannot do this with you. I will do it in the next generation. And they tried to do it on their own time. And isn't that something? They were too scared to do it. And now that God has said, oh, well, I'm not going to do it anymore. They want to go ahead and do it. That fear of missing out on something. Listen to God the first time. If you were so scared, but we're still going to end up doing it anyways. And now you're doing it. But without God, listen to God when he tells you to do something. Trust him and go with him. You cannot be swayed by what it looks like because that is the plan and intention of the enemy is to get you distracted in your flesh, to get you discouraged, focused, and afraid because he knows that if he can stop you on that front, God can't take you to where you need to be. But he knows that if you are set with your eyes focused on God, you are faithful and bold in trusting God, the devil cannot stop what God has for you. And this even reminds me of when I believe it was Peter walking on water with Jesus and he got distracted and took his eyes off of Jesus. That's when he started to sink because you can walk with God, be so close with God, be perfectly aligned with what God has for you. And the second you take your eyes off of him, that is when the enemy can swoop in and try to take what God has for you. If we go over to chapter two, verse seven, it says, for the Lord your God has blessed you in everything you have done. He has watched your every step through this great wilderness. During these 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you have lacked nothing. So that is where we're going to end today. But I just wanna encourage you, be faithful in your wilderness. It's okay. God is with you. And even though you are in your wilderness or your transition season, God is with you. He is blessing you. He is building you up. You are lacking nothing. So although you might not be in your promised land or in your full destiny and walking in your full purpose and everything that God has given you, you have what you need now. You have what you need today. And as you grow in that and you mature in who God needs you to be for your next level, you will get there in God's timing. So be faithful, be patient, and keep your eyes and ears open to what God is calling you to do, what he is teaching you, what he is giving to you in this season, who he is bringing to you in this season. When you get to that next level, when he opens that door and says, I'm ready for you, that you're ready, you're confident, you're bold, and you can be victorious. So I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. As I said in the beginning, make sure you tap in, whether it's on YouTube, it's on Instagram, or even on TikTok. Join our community. For those of you that are listening and being 
touched and transformed and growing in your faith, I want it to be a community. And that is definitely something I'm working on as well, just on other platforms. But for now, tap in, connect with each other in the comments, share your stories with each other, grow with each other. I, I want that for you all. I want to build that space, build that community where we are growing together, that you know you're not in it alone. You're not by yourself. Let us know what what you're hearing from God, what you're growing with, what maybe you were struggling with and that you've been able to learn and maybe give someone else some encouragement and let them know that they're not on their own. I want to see that. I want to interact with you all. I want to engage with you all. And I'm just very excited for where God is taking us. But but I hope that you have an amazing, amazing week. I will see you for another episode of Black Girl Bible next week. Bye.